Welcome back, everyone, to Gamers Initiative Podcast, Episode 4, with um, your friendly neighbourhood, Red Dead Panda. Hello, Red Dead Panda. Hello. Thanks for having me. That's all right. Welcome aboard. <laughs> uh, what have you been up to? <laughs> uh, oh, a lot's happened in a week. Not much gaming's been on. I've just been um, helping uh, renovate or do some painting and such renovations on my parents' um one of my parents' houses, so absolutely exhausted from that. Five days of non-stop hard work. Um, but I watched the uh, episode three of WandaVision this morning, so thoroughly enjoying that. Can't no wait spoilers, I've not episode. watched it yet. Um, yeah, no spoilers. I'm not going to say anything, because yeah. <laughs> you love Marvel, so yeah. why would I? Um, but yeah, I haven't been up to much. I haven't even played a video game since, like, Monday night, and it's rather depressing. <laughs> oh. Have you watched episode one of Bat really Batgirl boring. yet? Batwoman yet? <laughs> um, I mean, I love love DC and I love Batman and, and and such, but honestly, they lost me on season one when they had Ruby Rose as Batwoman. I was like, I'm not mm. interested. Don't like Ruby Rose. So they lost I me when I didn't follow the canon. Be... When they didn't, because <laughs> isn't isn't Batwoman the um the daughter of um oh what's his face Commissioner Gordon? Isn't that Batwoman? And then she turns, eventually becomes Oracle, doesn't she? Something like that, yeah. But this doesn't seem it's to be following that part. They just seem to have just made up their own nonsense. They just put me off right away from there. And then, and then, <laughs> and then in, in episode two, she um, seems to just find a costume and become Batwoman. <laughs> it's like find a, a Bat costume and that's it. She's got exactly, all the, exactly. everything, all the powers um, everything, of yeah. knowledge of Batwoman. It's weird. But, um, it's a no games then. Been playing no games. That's a really boring week. What? A... Well, yeah, I've no just... games. How depressing is that? Oh, I have right. been watching YouTube videos though. Right. <laughs> I've... What have you been up to, Ali? I've been um. So I was playing. I've been playing Conan as always. Um. I've been watching Naruto. I'm up to the stage now. Um. Uh, so no spoilers in the channel. I'm up to the stage where um. Where is it? Oh um. Oh, what's his face? The rapping guy, I can't remember his name now. I don't know. <gasps> He's a rapping guy. I don't. And he just and he beats the shark either. guy. Yes, yes, right. yes, yes. It's very deep. Um, and what have I else been playing? Oh, <laughs> Cyberpunk and. That was so vague. I yeah, no I idea know. what's going on. <laughs> Cyberpunk and there was something else I was playing as well. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, it's just a blur. Anyway, um, it's good to have you on board. Shall we get on with the show? Cyberpunk. Oh, actually, where can we find you? Where I want to be playing you? that. Yeah. Where can, we, where can we find you? You've gone quiet. Side. <laughs> oh, you, you broke up then. Where can we find you? Can you not hear me? You, you just broke off then. Wait. <laughs> no, go on, I didn't hear what oh, you said. Apologies then. there. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm down under in New Zealand uh, yeah. where it's safe to go outside uh, due to COVID. Um, but you can find me on Twitter. Um, I haven't been overly active this week because of how much hard work I've been doing, but you can find me at Red Dead Panda one and that's the number one um and you can also find me on uh, youtube at red dependent gaming and you can also add me on xbox live uh red dead panda 871 what about you where can we find you right Ollie? brilliant well you can find me here as always but also i think i'm going to mention that we have got a uh what do we use discord has it a discord channel going and we'd like to actually get more people into that channel where we can just get sort of a big gaming channel going and in, you know and just just share news and videos and stuff like that. So what Discord? I'll do is yeah, Discord Discord channel. It'd be good to get people into it, I think. So what I'll do is I'll what is that Discord channel called? Well, I don't know what the name of it or how you invite someone into it. I think you just have to send out invites, do you? You've gone quite again. Would like a link to our Discord um channel just message us in the comment section and we can send it out to you yeah yeah that'd be the best option there yeah if you're like an uh if you'd like to join our discord channel where we can share gaming news and just chat about gaming and stuff like that and um uh, whatever whatever side you're on if you're a ps fan if you're an xbox fan pc fan anyone um let us know in the comments and we will send you a link to it and you can join us and then maybe some of you will get on the shows uh, right so oh. 
let's get into the sh show then. So leading on, um, you did mention you're on Twitter. Um, so we're this will also take us nicely into our first subject, which is Naughty Dog and the Punisher game. I don't know if you've heard news on this. Um, I hadn't actually. No, um, boom on his show. This is the first time hearing about it. Mentioned it, uh, went into it, and they sort of had an interesting discussion about it. Um, so what basically what happened? Let me just cover what happened. Is that there's a lot of headlines and headlining at the moment going on about Naughty Dog's link to a Punisher game based on Sank Neil Druckmann said. Um, so I thought, oh, this is interesting. Let's have a look into this. I thought I'd look into this. And looking into it, and I've actually found the Twitter message that he said, I think the headlines and people are sort of jumping the gun a bit on this. What basically happened? I've got a Twitter in front of me. What basically happened is a, a chap called Greg Miller said, and I'll quote him, hypothetical question, Neil Druckmann. What established IP would you want to make a game for? And a Neil Druck, uh, Duckman replied, uh, and he said five games, and he listed one, two, three, four, five. He said Punisher, Half Life, Ghost Rider, Hotline Miami, Cowboy Bebop. Those come to mind. That's what he said, and that's all there was in the um, in the Twitter. But from that, everyone's jumped on the bandwagon that now Naughty Dog are making a Punisher game, and. Um, it's quite interesting originally because there's there's no sort of truth or anything to it. Basically, just said someone, uh, if you could make an IP, what would it be? And he's listed five games, but they've all just jumped on the Punisher one, and sort of under the impression that Naughty Dog are making this game when there's no, there's no real truth to it at all. Um, so I sort of just wanted to get that out there. What do you think? I mean, he mentioned Half Life. He would make like to make an I Half Life IP IP, but I don't know how that would work because who makes Half Life? So yeah, I believe Valve made Half Life, didn't they? Um, Red Dead. Yeah, yeah, they did. Um, so there is no, so, I mean, possibility Naughty Dog would be making a Half Life IP. No, which is exactly why he was. I don't. He just uh, have something he would love to do, but clearly not going to happen. No. Not while he continues to work for Naughty Dog. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's why it's a hypothetical question. The Punisher, I think, and that is now the Punisher's, I think, now owned by Disney again, as is Ghost Rider, um, and they've got no control over Disney. The only reason they have control over Disney with Spider Man is because Sony own the smooth rights of Spider Man, but they have no control over Punisher and Ghost Rider. So there's no reason why Disney would give them that for free. Hotline Miami, I'm not sure. So yeah, but the bottom line is he he listed a bunch of games. None of them are possible. That's why it's a hypothetical question. That's why I think the whole thing's just a, just a shrug. I mean, you look at the way Disney uh, um, does their games. I yeah. mean, what they do with their IP. It... You keep cutting out, sorry, yeah. Um, well, Disney generally just release their games multi-plat anyway, because they want to make as much money as possible. The only reason Spider-Man's not multi-plat is because, mm. um, because of the Spider-Man deal. The only reason that Indiana Jones will possibly not be that would be just shooting them, shooting himself in the foot. Yeah, it would be. Yes, it would be making it exclusive to PlayStation. It would be. It would. And it's weird because it said off off the back of the massive. I think success. it's stupid. I think, and if if we entertain this idea, yeah, if we entertain the idea of of this, um, and say that hypothetically Naughty Dog did do a Punisher game, I think that they would do a really good job. Because if you look at The Last of Us 2 with the animation, the way they did the story, everything like that, they would do an amazing job. However, that's never going to come to fruition. Um, we just look at the history of Disney and what they do with their IPs. They are not going to limit an IP like that to one console. They're going to make it multi to get as much back. people involved in that IP um, the sequel to that Punisher game would be amazing I mean entertaining the idea Naughty Dog would do a great job but it's, it's just oh, massively bought it again. yeah it's just a, a comment a, a throwaway comment on Twitter which people are running with we're not entertaining any other nah. 
No, I mean, look at the other list things on the oh, list. Oh, dear, that was all. Yeah, Half Life. Yeah, no one's looked at. He what also said Half Life. Half Life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or Ghost Rider, or Hotline Miami, or Cowboy. Yes, yeah, so, I mean they've, they've completely skipped all these other things he said. Gone through the Punisher, and it's just weird. It's almost as if it's sort Stupid. of it's almost um, as if it's, yeah, it's desperation not, it's not really because worth of, anything and why it's making headlines is pointless. Yeah, it's almost as if it's almost almost sort of trying to grab something back because the headline in about Indiana Jones being ex possibly Xbox exclusive is almost as if they've come back like, Well we well PlayStation's getting punisher, so there kind of thing. <laughs> it's all yeah. kind of, it was almost like it's all it, a, a, a desperate grasp at something. So it's, it's just not it's just not happening. No, it's not happening. So, um we finish here, should we move on to our next subject? So, um, so next subject is Hitman. Hitman on the Xbox Series X and Hitman 3 on the PS5. What have you got to say about this? Because this is something you've seen on Digital Foundry, uh, Red Dead. I'm surprised you haven't seen it, Elite. I've um, not, no. I was watching it. <laughs> it was actually quite interesting. Um, so, like, the title of the video talks about the Hitman 3, and then at the end of it, it's like Xbox Advantage 4K um so basically just to run you through what's going on is the series s in the next gen systems runs at uh native 1080p 60 frames per second which is great a game like uh hitman 3 should be running at 60 fps um yeah. ps5 at native 1800p and 60 frames per second and then the big one the 12 teraflop xbox series x runs at native 4k 60 frames per second let me it stop you there um... teraflops don't mean anything it's all about the ssd <laughs> <laughs> well the ssds don't mean anything there no. elite <laughs> i refuse to believe um, but it SSD. there are some <laughs> <laughs> there Cerny are some things me. on digital foundry's video um where there is um evidence that there are some higher settings on the series x so for example higher shadow quality on the series x over the ps5 so i think um this is the first game and even they indicate it's the first game where you're starting to yeah. see a performance delta between the two boxes um mind you both of these boxes are not being used to their full potential as of yet i mean no. um xbox's uh, gdk is still in its infancy i would say i wouldn't say infancy it's still it's still maturing so there's still more to go with that and, and even um io interactive studio isn't taking advantage completely of all the feature sets available yeah. to both the series x and even to the ps5 um but i think we're going to start seeing that when the, the more time that they have to optimize for the series x you're going to see a performance delta that everyone's been talking about based off math um, math tells you that the 12 teraflop sh should outperform a 10.28 teraflop um, device. Uh, the CPU is faster on the Series X than it is on the PS5. Not by much, but it is faster. So based off how maths works, in theory, we should have been seeing this earlier, but PlayStation 5, um, their development kits were more mature um, than the Series X's yeah yeah you've, you've cut optimized out. for those yeah. um for yeah. those titles yeah as i covered in the video ages ago um, a lot yeah they what basically what was said in uh, digital foundry which loads of the ps fan base sort of glazed over when these games are coming out the earlier games and some of them running better on the ps5 they wasn't taken into account which digital foundry said is nothing to do with the, co the console itself it's due to the optimization and the devs hadn't had as as long to optimize the games the xbox series x as they had for the ps5 the ps5 dev kits were actually out a year before and i had a d debate with a fanboy about this and i proved it i showed i sent him links and stuff the ps5 dev kits were out a year longer than the xbox series f dev kits so all devs have had a year longer to, to get up to scratch on how the consoles work as this time clicking now and the consoles are both launched we're now going to see the devs having equal or more or less equal time with the consoles getting up to scratch with all the xbox series x capabilities and now that's where that will lead and all those things certainly the genius and terror 12 teraflops is irrelevant is going to just be debunked basically yeah and we're going to see that now as these games before i mean 4k 4k native 60 fps versus 1800p 60 fps that's that's a massive and then the xbox series has, has 
extra optimized shading, for. Yeah, optimized yeah. shading and stuff like that. This Xbox Xbox Series S, the slim, is 1080p, 60 FPS. So it's only slightly less than the PS5. And that console's 150 quid cheaper than the PS5. So we're going to see more games coming out and Xbox Series X, as we predicted, due to maths, due to facts, due to logic, is just going to keep leading and leading and going to have better quality games. And I can't wait for the first party IPs, um, their big budget IPs. So well. Yeah, they perform so well, and the big budget IPs are just going to just lead the way. I can't wait to see Hellblade 2. It's going to look incredible. I think that will be the first of the big budget AAA IPs. So, so, so sorry, I'll write it there. What, do you, what more have you got to say? Because you sort of cut out. Well, um, I mean, right now, this is one of the first games that have come out that we've seen where there is that performance deficit. Um, I think we're going to see more games like that, but I also think we're also going to see games where the PS5 is still... Um, hitting and matching the series x just based on optimization because they've had more times with the dev kits um but the more we go along into this generation that's where we should see um the series x based on everything should be able to outperform the ps5 in every aspect minus the ssd mind you they have come and talked about velocity architecture and and the um BC pack and all of that, um, offsetting that to make it just as efficient as the SSD when uh, PS5's SSD when you're talking about Kraken and all of those details. So I think I think they're very evenly matched. There is clearly going to be one winner um, when it comes to that. But who cares who the winner is at the end of the day? You're playing your game where you want to play it. I'm playing my game where I want to play it. Yes, there is performance differences. Just, just shut up and game, guys. Um, I'm happy to just acknowledge that there is a better system out there, um, but it's not going to change the impact on my enjoyment of me playing a game as to your enjoyment of you playing a game. I prefer to game on the Xbox ecosystem. You prefer to game on PlayStation, maybe, or PC, or Switch, or wherever you prefer to play. That is where you you prefer to play. And um, we're just now seeing. We're just about now starting to see that the people who were championing championing um the ps5 over the xbox series x you were wrong there is evidence coming through to show you that one system is more powerful than the other who cares though guys just take the l you like to pull up xbox on every little thing that they do when when it counts right when you guys think it matters the moment that um xbox is proving you guys wrong like talking about like ssd there is evidence to show that um gpu power does matter over ssd speeds and when you're looking at performance i mean if it didn't why do we have such powerful uh, pc gaming graphics cards if an ssd could outperform that why would we have a 3090 like, what's the point? Um, so just accept that there are limitations to the box. There are limitations to the seri- the Xbox Series Xbox as well, considering it's not a gaming GPU. Um, but it is clearly the, the better system in regards to what it can do around performance. I mean, so if we're looking at the um, SSD anyway, like I was mentioning, SSD, SSD, that has been a talking point from the get-go from the PS5. It's not important any longer. Um, teraflops are important. People who say they aren't are fooling themselves. You look at PCs today, we wouldn't have a 3090 if uh, teraflops weren't important. A teraflop, I mean, a, G- a, C- a GPU will outperform a SSD when it comes to power. You're not going to get more frames. You're not going to get more power because of the SSD. That is not what an SSD does. It is not a GPU. So I I think people need to acknowledge the fact that one system is more powerful than the other and get over it and just play your games. Um, But, I mean, talking about that anyway, what's your opinion on on, um, the whole Hitman 3? Any any other questions or anything you want to add? Um, No. Uh, Yeah, I've covered it in videos and you've covered it as well. Teraflops... um... And GPU power and CPU is a thing. It's a fact. And I think Cerny, I think, misled gamers into believing that SSD power 
was more important than GPU and CPU capabilities. And people obviously run with it because they have a lot of faith in Cerny. But changing I mean, the narrative, changing the goalposts. Yeah, yeah, basically from the beginning of the generation with the PS4 versus Xbox One when GPU and CPU was a big thing, which is what Sony said, and now he's reversed it saying it's not a big thing, it's SSD. But then let's, let's go with Harry's running with SSD power and the capabilities of SSD. What's the, what's the load times for the PS5 for the same game compared to the Xbox Series X? What did Digital, digital Foundry say? Um, there's like less than a second difference between the PS5 and the Series X. The PS5 is slightly faster. Um, I think it loads in at like seven seconds something, and then the Xbox loads at eight seconds point something. But it's like literally, if you work that out, it's less than a second difference based on the milliseconds. And then the Series S is just a bit slower than the Series X in that load time. Um, so there's not a huge difference. No. So basically the SSD doesn't really stand for much. It gives an extra second. And, but, and the major factor here is the SSD is adding so much value to the PS5 console. If they didn't have that SSD in it, it would be a lot cheaper. Um, and it's just it's just, it's just not worth it for the extra second load time. Because they even, they, I mean, well, we, I... we was looking at before that the backwards compatibility games were running faster on the Xbox Series X than they were the the ps5 and then they, they said what was the game valhalla the the load times while the load times on valhalla are fast on the ps5 the um what's it when you go from one place to another in games oh what's it called fast travel the travel. fast travel is actually faster on the xbox series x than it was on the ps than it was on the ps5 for valhalla so by well, about a second so pretty I much i think it's hard to to kind of um Give an, give an example of load times in this regard for this type of game because it is a cross-gen game. Um, it hasn't... It's been made to run on the old generation systems as well as the new gen. And I think when we're looking at games that are purely made for next gen, we might see a, a bit more of a, di a, a difference. But again, you're looking at velocity architecture, not being involved in this, BC pack not being involved in this... Um, you're also not you're not hearing anything about Kraken at the moment, um, yeah. but you might see a, a vast difference of load times when you're talking about games that are exclusively for the PS5. Yeah. Um, and then there'll be a difference when you're looking at games that are exclusively for the Xbox ecosystem. Um, so it, it is kind of hard to to kind of like say the PS5 SSD isn't as big a thing as we thought it was going to be when we look at how Xbox Series X based on its math wasn't as big like we were noticing it wasn't as big because there's still optimizations devs still have to utilize it but at the moment right now as we speak there hasn't been that huge difference like you've been saying out of every game that's released on both the PS5 and the Series X there hasn't been a huge difference where the no. SSD has really made a, a massive difference to load times in regards to that you you aren't seeing that at the moment um, no. we may see it in future but right now we're not Whereas 4K native versus 800p is a huge difference, especially when that you take into account that the Xbox Series X also has advanced shading, better shading and and uh, quality and stuff as well, yep. on top of the 4K and, native. And, yes, and it, and it sounds like... Um, well, what's, the, what's the cool thing about um, Hitman 3 is, because they also, with Digital Foundry, they did a look at... Because um, you can get access all the old maps from the previous hitman games oh, okay. um and what they showed was with the um, series x um and even the ps5 there were settings that weren't available on the older system like screen space reflections weren't there in the um older generation systems but they're now on the next gen systems right. that's a big difference um that's made a dramatic change to how that game looks it feels a lot more realistic um but yeah there are higher settings on the series x um and it's running at a higher resolution also 60 frames per second so i i, I think we're going to start to see a lot more there i agree there with you elite so the bottom line is the, the media and a certain fan base back to the wrong horse really and the, the inevitable which we knew it would be is standing out as the better console and as it goes on i, I can't see it dropping behind the, the ps5 again it will just keep leading I but as you, uh, but I just go on. Sorry, 
I was just going to say, I think that the media and Sony fans um, really bought into what Sony was saying. Yeah. Really bought into the whole PlayStation thing and all their PlayStation has now going for them and what they will have going for them is their ecosystem and their first party exclusives. That's that's them. Until they branch out and like um, what's it, Jim Ryan has been saying, they're looking at doing something like Game Pass and probably not going to be like Game Pass, but it's going to be an equivalent option for that. Um, I don't I don't think um, I th I don't think they were really open minded to what Xbox was saying, and a lot of gamers are closed minded. Like I'm open minded to what PlayStation saying. I'm not a PlayStation fan. I've never um, said I have been. I've never denied that I prefer Xbox over PlayStation. Um, but I'm not stupid to the fact that that is a really good system. Um, it's gigantic, and I don't understand why. Well, I do technically understand why. Um, no, but sick. it's it's just irrelevant. It shouldn't have been. They could have div they could have engineered it a lot better. Yeah. Um, but you you really should have been as gamers listening to what was coming out of xbox when they were talking about their specs is that your cat in the background yeah yeah she's been noisy i thought He's so, been noisy too. so red <laughs> they're, they're, they're very vocal. Um, i i i think they should have been listening and, and i think these people should have been a lot more open-minded and, and less quick to judge um xbox based on its its past um and look where it's going it's trajectory trajectory and that kind of sets really good pacing of what our next topic is if we look at the trajectory of xbox how they talk about how you as a gamer are in the center they've proven that just in the last 24 to um 48 hours um yeah. elite do you want to start our next topic well i'm just going to finish up on the last topic i was just going to say that i think the issue is that the ps fan base you got you got the, the cult following that will just praise Sony regardless. On top of that, you got Cerny, who's classed as a genius, yet he makes a gigantic console with a giant heatsink to run a console that inevitably is weaker than the Xbox Series X, but the console is twice the size and has a giant heatsink in it just to keep it from cooling. And this guy is classed as a genius. Um, and then and then you got the media. That also will back Sony regardless. So uh, you know, you just this is why Xbox never gets, uh, just never gets a chance really. And the, yeah, this does lead nicely onto the next subject, which is um, Xbox Live Gold going up in price. So yeah, the recent topic is Xbox Live Gold went up in price. Went up, went up to was it 120 a year? Doubled um, in price. Yeah. Doubled in went price. Went from 60 bucks a year to 120. That's US dollars, guys. Yeah, um, it's different worldwide. Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, I, I, I've not really looked into how much it is. Basically, because I don't subscribe to it anyway, I subscribe to Ultimate uh, Game Pass Ultimate anyway, so it's sort of irrelevant to me. Um... Yeah, so I, you don't know the price in the UK. I'm not a hundred percent on what the price is in New Zealand for um, gold because I no longer have gold. As soon as Game Pass came out. And then Game Pass Ultimate, I switched. Um, obvious reasons, it's a better value. Um, but it was quite shocking. Twitter was tr uh, trending about Xbox Gold Live. Um, and even like Mike Ybarra commented on it. It felt like that the price hike was um, matching um, Game Pass. So it was unintentionally um, forcing people to switch to Game Pass. Uh, and what you, if you read the statements correctly, they were saying that people who are already paying for Game Pass are going to be, I mean, not Game Pass, uh, Gold, are going to be grandfathered across, like, they're going to be still grandfathered into their price. It's going to be affecting the new people who sign up for Gold. Um, but there was so much negative press that um, within 12 hours, I don't even think it was 12 hours, it might no. have been 10 hours or so, they reversed it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which was surprising to me. What did you think of this? Um, well, I think for one, it's very pro-consumer from just reverse it, just like on the fly, just a click. Okay, we won't do that, just because of negative feedback. You would never get that from the Sony's bench. You'd never get Sony just re just go back on something immediately after the feedback. I mean, we've seen it with, we've seen it several times with Xbox doing this. They announce something, fans say we don't like it, Xbox go, all right then, we'll change it. 
We've never seen that from Sony. So there's that point. But the second thing, I can, I can see, they probably made the wrong approach. I can see they're trying to phase out Xbox Live Gold by pushing over people. See that to, too, yeah. Yeah, so they want to push people over to Game Pass. This probably was not the best approach. What they probably should have done and is that, just got rid of Xbox Live Gold altogether. Just removed it. Said, that's what next Mike Gibara said. Like, yeah. yikes. Yeah, there'd be no Xbox Live. Um, so I think their approach on that was probably a bit weird. They should probably, yeah. So um, I can see where they're going with it. It's just that I think they, they, yeah, they probably took the wrong way of going around it. Was it? And I don't think it was anti-consumer though what they did because to be honest, I think a lot of people are moving over to because Game Pass Ultimate has Xbox Live and all those things in it and more in it anyway. So I don't think it's Bad really streaming. PC. Yeah, yeah, EA Access. Um, it's recently it's, you get thirty days with Disney Plus on it. It's got loads of stuff on it now. Game Pass. Um, because they want to make it a massive sort of all-in-one hub, don't they, for everything gaming and everything video. But I don't, I, but I don't see the same. They've they also retracted. And they've took out. You can play games for free now, don't haven't they, on it now? Yes, free to play games like Fortnite yeah. and all of those other lovely games yeah. um, where there is a free free to play mo- multiplayer option. Yeah, um, is now free to play you don't need gold whereas previously you did and they, they've talked about um trying to reduce the barriers um that get the gamer into gaming and that's a barrier that was there and people have been talking about for years to take that pay to pay to play wall away and they have for yeah. the free to play wall away um what was your actual thoughts so elite where before they announced the um before they uh, changed their decision and reversed it what were your thoughts initially before they change their mind. Um, just yeah. interesting. Firstly, I just want to touch on the the pay to play thing. I think I think that 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 thing sort of a uh, misled marketing um, thing just to downplay Xbox. I think I think the whole you should be able to play games for free thing is not really relevant because who who owns who owns a PS4, or PS5, and doesn't pay for p- the PSN anyway? Who? Nobody. A lot There's of no, them. Y- a like, lot of them well, though because for, they because if you they come out these stats where like 90 90 of them pay for ps now don't they i don't i don't imagine anyone thinks i'm going to buy an next gen console and only play fortnite on it and not pay for any subscription on it on the not pay for ps plus or not pay for xbox live nobody thinks i'm going to buy a next gen console and i'm just buying this console solely to play free games so i'm not going to subscribe i don't think many people actually do that so I, I don't think that was what, ever really me. a point. PS Now and PS Plus, what's the difference? Oh, yeah, remind yeah, me? I'm a bit confused oh, about the thing. Yeah, I, there's, there's my brain few... gets confused. Right, so PS, no, it's PS Plus and PS Now. So PS Plus is the equivalent of Xbox Live. PS Now is the equivalent of, of Game Pass. But it's their, their like a, a poor band. They're streaming yeah, where they so, can, they've so, finally yeah, done so it. So their PS Plus is basically Xbox Live. But who owns a PS4 but doesn't have Xbox uh, PS Plus? Who there'll, owns be a, a PS4? there'll be quite a few of them um, because my understanding, and it's something that, that rightly so PlayStation fans have been pulling up Xbox on saying, hey, these games are free to play. If you subscription lapses, you can still play this game. Yeah. Uh, whereas they you have would been stuck sad. behind a paywall on, on Xbox. And I, I think it was very fair for so, PlayStation to, to consistently, or PlayStation fans to consistently remind us about that fact. Yeah. Because that was a more consumer friendly practice that they had on that side. But that's one consumer friendly yeah. practice that they have. They don't have that many. I mean, you look at the fact that if you want um, cloud saves, you have to pay for PS now. Yeah. Or PS Plus, sorry. But that's my point. You get free cloud cloud yeah. saves through Xbox. That like is... I don't have to pay for a subscription. I get cloud saves. Yeah. Um. So. But you've made the point what, there. Because yeah. So so you get so they say right. You can have, you can play free to play games for free. There you go. You can have them all free, except you don't get any saves. So unless you pay subs, so you don't you can, you can play games for free on PlayStation. But you don't get any cloud saving. You also don't get any updates or anything like that because you have to be subscribed to PS Plus. And you don't get all the benefits with PS Plus. You don't get like their online and their other online games. So say like I don't I don't need PS Plus. I can just play the first party games. But a lot of their first party games require PS Plus for things like updates and upgrades and things like that, or even the multiplayer versions. Say so you need PS Plus. So I think the whole 
you can you can do you don't really need a subscription to play on either console i think is a bit of a weak a weak point it is a point but i think it's a weak i don't think it affects nearly as definitely as weak people. now yeah when it's definitely it no longer now. applies no it applies now um yeah. but what's you... interesting though like go on sorry sorry go no, you go. <laughs> no, but I was just saying, you, and, and, but your other your other point, what did you, you ask me? Oh, oh, beforehand. Beforehand, yeah, I, it, it didn't affect me at all. Yeah, I didn't care. Mainly because was I you on Game, Pass? Ga- Game Pass Ultimate anyway. So it was, it was completely irrelevant to me. And secondly, if... I, anyone buying a console now, it says it only affects people who come buying consoles now. But anyone buying a console now, surely you get you buy Game Pass Ultimate, didn't you? Why would you just, why would you think, Stupid if you had two options... Well, Game Pass. Yeah, if you look at the two options and all, Xbox. If okay, uh, you know, they. If someone went to you, right, you can buy this console. Right, I'll buy that console. And they said, and then they said to you, what packages have you got? And you said, right, I've got this package, which was 120 a year. It's called Game Pass. With Game Pass, you get 200 games, all its first party free, yada 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 yada. Or we've got Xbox Live. It's it's half the price, and you get nothing. <laughs> You know, other than sort of a security and stuff like that, and the, the general stuff that comes with Xbox Live, what would you choose? You're gonna go, oh, I'll go with Game Pass Ultimate, please, as it includes Game uh, Xbox Live anyway. I'll, I'll just go. And you just went with that anyway. That was the given. Any anyone joining the ecosystem now would have went towards um, Game Pass. I think the only people that it does affect is people for whatever reason wouldn't want Game Pass for whatever reason, and that um, kind of it would. It would affect the people who have families. Like, you can get that family gold thing. Like, the family part. Pl- I don't know what it is. Um, I don't have, I just game share with my sister, and that's about yeah, it. Yeah, but, but Game Pass um, but game It was affecting well. those people, because Game Pass Ultimate, uh, like, it allows you to game share, but with one person. You don't have it for the whole family. There's no family pass type oh, thing that there was with gold. Oh, yeah, there's no, there's no, no, there isn't an equivalent of that at that point. Um, oh, I thought there was. Okay. Not officially. You can only game share with one person. Obviously, with gold, when I log into a console and I've got Xbox Gold, yeah. Obviously, through Game Pass, I give that console whoever's console I load in, like sign into, I give that console gold the moment I sign in, so they can use online services if they want. Um, but I'm not choosing to game share with that person, so they don't get access to any of my oh, Game yeah. Pass of games. Course. Yeah, yeah. Type thing. Um, but. So those people would have been affected. They didn't have the family plans, and there's probably family plans coming out. Um, my thoughts, though, obviously, like you, I was like, it doesn't really affect me. But then I thought about the other people it would affect, and I understand, like, there are, there are two sides to the coin where people are going, hey, Game Pass, uh, uh, gold hasn't really had a price increase in 500 years, basically. I'm a bit over-exaggerating. Well, actually, no, I've got to pull this up. Xbox Live um, has had one, ten one years. price increase. In in ten years, it hasn't. It actually says it hasn't had a price increase in ten years. It has had an increase, yeah. but not in the past ten years. Whereas PS, yeah. but the equivalent on PlayStation, PS um, Plus. Well, I've got to remember to get them right. PS Plus has had three price increases last generation alone. It had a price increase in 20, uh, 2015, 2017 and twenty nineteen. On top of that, they also increased their game prices from sixty to seventy dollars. Of which they was going to increase them to eighty, but were actually shot down for it. So they just done it to seventy. So not only have they done price increases on their services, but also game price increases. But there doesn't seem to be a Twitter backlash or a media backlash at Sony. That's my sort of gripe about it. It's just, it just we're going well, to a new generation, fresh slate. But it's still, but we've kicked off because they start last generation kicked off the Xbox One had DRM, and that's why everyone hated it, the media hated it, blah, 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 and that was the excuse given. This generation, there's none of that mess, it's just a clean slate, there's nothing there, but they still seem to be finding reasons to hate on Xbox, but not PlayStation, and I'm just not getting that, I just don't, don't see why they've just decided to side Be- with one side regardless. Because of the fact that, I guess the when you look at it, the beginning p- company that decided to unofficially announced price increases to games was what was that 2k yeah with uh, nba yeah so they got they got the flack for it right yeah and then and then ea did it i think um was there another company i can't remember um yeah. and then sony jumped on that bandwagon yeah so they weren't the head honchos they didn't lead the pack 
if they had led the pack, I don't think it would have been um, anything like what 2K got. I think it would have been damage controlled, like how everyone says it, yeah. damage control um, for Xbox. But they, it would have been their games are worth a price increase That's of seventy dollars, like they currently say yeah. now. They still yeah. currently say that, but it yeah. would have been accepted. The media would have spun it around to say, "Yes, it's acceptable." If Xbox had done it, no, you ga- your games, you haven't proven the fact that your games are worth seventy dollars. Yeah. Um, but I think if we're talking about the seventy dollars price increase, we can't forget that. It should be industry wise. Uh, industry wide, if we're going to go, hey, that's unfair that you've increased the price to seventy dollar games. We can't just target Sony specifically because it's yeah. not just Sony doing it. It's it's third party um, publishers and such. I think we need to be fair in that regard. Yes, Sony's this big um, arm of the gaming industry, but to allow seventy dollar games, that's a bit of a dick move. Um, but I I guess my thing is like looking at that. Um, Everyone came out, Sony, PC, Xboxes came out in droves just talking about it, was trending on Twitter. People didn't like the fact that this was happening. Xbox saw that, they acknowledged that. Within 24 hours, they had reversed the decision and changed it. That's what, that's what it is. They listened to the community. That's that's so They have the game at center. And they have proven that that's their, what they want to do. Where are the Sony fans going up against Sony and PlayStation going, we demand better. You do it. You yeah. reverse your stance on something. That doesn't happen. They doesn't just happen. accept and they go, oh, Sony lifts $70 games. Other companies lift $70 games. Yeah. Sony allows $70 games on their platform, blah, 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 blah. You know, they they just aren't coming back with the same gusto that they are coming at xbox with and xbox yeah. fans we aren't overly negative we will go hey that's really shit Do you, can you change it because we know that they listen to the community they listen to their gamers yeah, and they know that we yeah. expect better so they have to match that yeah whereas sony don't don't even make the effort to change anything because they know their fans their, their fans and the media will defend them regardless so they actually don't even bother yep. it's sort of there be, be a, even if there's a minor backlash, Sony will go shrug it off because they, they know their fans will defend them and the, the media will defend them. Because because the point is, you know, when the the game price went up, they said, and then the, the fans were saying, well, because their games are better and because they're going to be bigger and better. But but they released Demon Souls, which is a PS3 remaster for seventy pounds. It's a remastered game for the PS3, basically, and that was seventy pounds. Why is that? bigger and better why is that like why was why was that allowed why is a remaster allowed to be 70 pounds what um spider-man miles morales which is just basically this is everyone said it has played now is glorified dlc and they've done a video on it is a the, it, it absolutely sunk in sales it was poor in sales and if you read the comments on it people didn't buy it because they knew it was dlc and the price of it because they raised the price of of Spider Moles Morales, even though it was just DLC. So you can't say we've they've raised prices of games because their games are bigger and oh, better. No, because they're not. Those two games prove it. They're raising the prices just out of pure greed. And they're gonna raise prices of all games out of pure greed. Seventy percent? Was it seventy percent it sold less and it's on more than one platform? Yeah. Miles Morales. Miles Morales is on PS yes. Yeah, it's on PS4 and PS5. It only sold it sold uh, seven hundred thousand copies on PS4 and PS5. It sold hundred million, uh, under a million, one million copies. That is awful. That is absolutely terrible. It was a short game. It pay, basically people knew it was seven called hours. by DLC, and there yeah. were a lot of people negative about we believe in generations, and then they came out and said we're going to support stuff for three to four years. Yeah, and there's um, no backlash now. And there's also interesting. Yeah, sorry, I just want to say also while I was thinking about it. Also, when the price hike did come up and the games were coming out, no media come out and said, "Oh, wait a minute, um, Xbox are having their games; they're not doing a price hike." Instead, you can get their first party on Game Pass for free. All their day games, and they won't, yeah, day and date for free. There's no seventy pound price hike on Xbox. No media come out and def- and said, done a comparison like, "Oh, these games are checking out games for seventy quid, while Game Xbox is just putting their games for free onto Game Pass." No, nobody come out, right? But when Xbox Live be- does this, it's like, oh, anti-consumer. <laughs> That's because the toxic part of our community, and I say our community because I'm talking about all gamers in this yeah. regard, have 
the tox the actual toxic part of that community have this mentality that game pass is just indie trash or yeah. single a trash or maybe they might pr- low put one double a game in or one triple yeah. a game in once Absolute a year myth. they yeah. they literally do not have any understanding of what that is like we've got 23 gaming studios um that are going to be making games for xbox yeah 23 gaming studios that are going to be releasing games day and date and some of those studios have more than one team which are working on more than one um one project so there's going to be more than there's going to be more than enough games like and some are going to be yes double a some are definitely going to be triple a and then there's going to be the odd quadruple a whatever that ends up yeah. looking like but uh what i really want to point out is this is quite interesting so on twitter um yeah. GameSpot um posted up about uh, the article about how Microsoft is increasing um, Xbox Live Gold subscription prices and Xboxes aren't happy. Yes, that is 100% true. But they posted that two hours after Xbox had already posted the reversal. Oh, man. Like, how are you not keeping up? You're a news yeah. outlet. How are you not keeping up with what's happening and going, oh, okay, Xbox has now reversed it. Yes, this was the case. They weren't happy. This is what the community has done. It's now reversed. Everyone's happy. Yeah. And there's so many people out there in the Twitter community, in the gaming community, who just haven't taken the out. They've been real quiet since Xbox has said that. But there are a lot of us who came out and said, you did wrong. You did right now. Thank you. You listened. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's awful. That's, this is what I mean by media just being absolutely biased the way they just, just to, even though we reverse it. Or just it, being lazy. Yeah lazy news is which we know they are the bottom line they, they, when they the stuff they post in the media posts a lot of it is, is lazy writing and easy writing that's why they that's basically why they copy people and copy up youtubers for the, their a lot of their reviews and stuff or, or they play they do reviews of games they've not even played like that lady was called that caught out doing the last of us 2 review and give it a 9 out of 10 but sort of admitted that she um no cyberpunk was it's but yeah, she's the same way she's done uh, Last of Us 2, but Cyberpunk, she'd give it a 4 out of 5, but hadn't played the game. But she'd just give it a 4 out of 5 rating. Um, was she an IGN lady? I think she might be an IGN lady. Um, it's, just, it's just like that. And then that, that time that guy was caught out for copying a YouTuber's review, wasn't it? it was, yeah, he was an IGN as well, wasn't he? Um, where he just copy painted some random YouTuber's review of, the, of a game. Um, yeah, it's just lazy media. and it's, it's, I apologise. Ultimately, it's this... This is what's going to kill gaming, and ultimately, it's the a fan base and, and fanboys that supporting that media that is killing gaming because we didn't used to have this, and gamers used to be more united. We'd have a, 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 a gaming was great, and now it just seems to get really toxic, really nasty. Media is pushing the agenda because it it gets them clicks, and then you get yep, idiotic. It's about the clicks. Yeah, it's about so the are clicks. YouTubers about the clicks. Yeah, and then idiotic fan bases will join aside we'll join a wagon because it just makes them feel good about themselves i'm not quite sure why they will just they will just support a, a, a false narrative to make themselves feel but even if they know it's false they will just support it anyway because it makes them feel good in a way i don't know the, what the underlining i don't know what's happening with that but I, I i do think it was extremely important for everyone to acknowledge that it was a it wasn't a great idea with what xbox was doing clearly it looked like as you were saying that they were possibly trying to encourage more people off gold and onto ultimate um or, or just game pass in general yeah um which but yeah, we they... came out as a community and said this is not okay let's change that imagine if we had come out as a community and said that when loot boxes came around yeah, yeah. imagine that loot boxes have ruined the way we play games yeah um they they really have they absolutely have um and the people who spend money on the loot boxes and um for anyone who's listening if you do um you shouldn't have to the whole point of playing play, paying for a game in full is getting the game in full mm. unless you are getting added on dlc and like i said paying for dlc why can't we have the full game yeah. we haven't really stuck up for certain things and and Companies have figured out ways to make more money of us and more money of us and more money of us. Um, we just need to go, here's a line, you're not crossing it. And we have said, in this case, we've said, you're crossing the line here, back your bus up. And they did. They realized that they weren't 
um, being consumer friendly and didn't have the uh, gamers in the center. And then they put that back and they corrected that. And that's what we need to see more of. And I think that's what every company and all the fans need to do more of is speak out, especially Sony fans. They are just exactly. horrendous at not yeah, they, speaking up yeah, and exactly. accepting their fate. But, well, yeah, because then uh, why is no one still speaking up at Sony saying, Sony, you lied to us all that, all that time ago saying that SSD is the way. Um, they all ran with the narrative that the SSD, the, the load times will be times five faster on the PS5 compared to Xbox Series X. And there is still. Hey, you- like uh, four months later, what? there's still no, or three months later, there's still nothing to prove that point. Nothing. That but reminds nothing. me, you're talking about um, what's happening with Sony, but like what happened with Sony at the beginning of the year where they announced. So, you know, all those Sony Bravia TVs that were selling last yeah. year, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that were meant to be PS5 compatible, blah, blah, blah. And they said there was going to be um, some of like, what was it? There were going to be some updates coming um um firmware updates that would oh, offer yeah. a, um some certain feature sets through this tv and then they came out and announced later on that they aren't coming to this tv they're coming to the tvs that are releasing in 2021 instead so people had paid into yeah. um bought these tvs at the idea that sony was going to keep up keep to, to their word and um put this firmware update in so that their con- their tv could take full advantage of their console yeah. um now those people are able to get refunds, but they've made it very clear for anyone who purchases it after this annou- announcement, they can't get a refund because they've clearly stated that this is not available. Yeah. Um, but that's just underhandedness, and that's coming from another arm of Sony in the, in, or another branch of Sony from their TV side. Like, obviously, it's c- clearly coming from the PlayStation side as well. They're not 100% honest with uh, everyone. The way that they did that... Um, Breakdown of the PlayStation. Oh, the breakdown of cross gen. It's so many things. Yeah. Rubbish. Yeah, it is a, very misleading. The whole Sony talk was very misled. He wanted to just talk tech and waffle, just to draw people away, just just to sort of zone you out, so you didn't and you nobody knew what was going on. And then they did that purposely, purposely because they didn't want you to know the truth. And he purposely avoided certain points and for certain. He didn't go into anything because he just rubbished it off. Oh, these things don't matter because we're putting an SSD in it. And the media went, oh, things don't, Teraflops don't matter because they're putting an SSD in it. That's what Sony said. And everyone followed then that narrative. And then oh, a year later, oh, where are we now? Where is Sony now? He's been silent for almost a year now. <laughs> he's done He's done his job. He's done his bit. He's it's... busy working on the PS5 Pro. I thought you knew that. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we're going to um... hear it all again. On a lighter note, anyway, you have that lovely video talking about um, games coming in 2021 and and, and further into that. What games, just on a lighter note to finish up nicely, what are you looking forward to from Xbox? Even if it's not coming out this year, possibly next year or the year after, what is your most anticipated game? Oh, you watched watched that video, yeah, from 2021 onwards. So, yeah. Um, Yeah. There's quite a lot of games. You see all those. And those are exclusives. So I think, and then you were... said you missed some. So yeah, no, I did miss some. Yeah, because I definitely I put a cent in there. There was a few games, that, you know, Indiana Jones could be exclusive. Now there's quite. A... I think I missed about five games off of it. Um, so I think so. I did include I put about fifteen games that are Xbox exclusive over the next two years. Um, so are you looking forward to the playing? ones I'm looking forward to are I'll, I'll say my top three that I'm looking forward to. Out of, you mean over over from 21, 20, 2021, 22, 23? Or just right any on. games that have been announced that are coming. Um, right. I would say... I'm trying to think of the games, to be honest. <laughs> um, what games were there? Uh, oh, Microsoft Flight Slim, actually. I'm looking forward to that. Yep. I really want to play that. Um, I'm looking forward to playing that. I'm looking forward to playing... I can't even think of the games, to be honest now. It's all gone from my head. I've done a video on it. I put gone. you on the spot. Yeah, you have. Go on. What, 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 what games? <laughs> what three games are you looking forward to? I know. I can. I can say um, yours. Yours gonna be Fable. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's gonna be Fable. Fable. I think. I reckon you're gonna go with Fable, Hellblade Two, and um, uh, Everwild. <laughs> um, it's uh, Fable, Hellblade Two, and then I'm avowed. Oh yeah, Val. Yes, I am quite looking forward to Perfect Dark though. Yeah. Um, 
that would be my number four, but avowed. Like, you've got two out of three. That's yeah, really good. You yeah. know me quite well if that's the case. I talk about these games all the time. That's yeah. why. <laughs> I did forget about Avowed, actually. Avowed. Yeah, Avowed's going to be good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Avowed. I think Avowed, uh, as I said, Fable. I've got to see more of it. So if it's... Oh, no, actually, State of Decay 3, I'm really looking forward to as well. Oh, If they yes, make that co-op, can, that'd yeah. be fantastic. Then you and I can play. I mean, yeah. play, if it's fully co-op, co-op, not like, co-op. Not like play, uh, start, State of Decay 2 was, where it's sort of jump in, jump out. If it's fully yeah. co-op, that would be fantastic. Oh, that that would be the game. That would be my number one game, I think, the go-to game. Uh, that, yeah, I like I, I like racing games, so I'm kind of intrigued to see what happens with Forza, actually. What they're going to do, whether that's Forza Horizon or the next Forza Motorsports, I'm kind of yeah. intrigued because I like racing games. As I said, I did in my video, I'm not into races, but the beauty of it is it'll be on Game Pass, so I'll be able to play it anyway for free. So I will definitely check it out. What I'm, the, the thing I like to do on Microsoft Flight Sim would be I can actually fly to your house and have a look at your painting you've done to it. See how you've painted it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting. So, just doing a second coat. Yeah, but I wonder if we oh, you'll be able to come to New Zealand and look at the land of the long white cloud. Yeah. Because New Zealand is also known as Aotearoa. It stands for land of the long white cloud. And literally, we always have cloud coverage. Like, there's always cloud somewhere. Oh, right. um, It'd be good just but are you going to be signing up for the um, Halo beta? Um, yes. Do you see that? I've, no, I've not seen that at all. Oh, yeah, there's Halo as well. I, all about Halo. Yeah, it's Halo Infinite. That's what I want to sign for. up for it, but I'm like, is it just the multiplayer beta? Because I don't really play multiplayer shooters that much like that, like um, PvP. Yeah. Um, I prefer PvE. Um, I've not so been, I been into for the Halo, shoot, the Halo style of shooting, to be honest. I might get, let's see how it turns out. I might give it a go. Uh, it's on Game Pass, so. Yeah, it's on Game Exactly, that is a beauty Game Pass, isn't it? Unlike <laughs> sort of other consoles, you... you it's sort of you're you're gambling there. You think you got you got to put down seventy pounds, and you could put down seventy pounds in the game and go, yep, don't like it. Seventy pounds gone. Or obviously you sell the game back to GameStop, or whatever, and they take 40, 40 quid off the game. And go, yeah, it's twenty quid back. Um, so yeah, that's the beauty of Game Pass that you can try every one of these games that comes out and play every one of these games out day one. Sort of pretty much for free, and then we've got all those third party games that are coming out, like the Gunk and Medium and Scorn, and what was that? Um, Arc 2 and Crossfire X, Mecha. Oh, oh Crossfire oh, X, that's the Crossfire good. Crossfire X looks that good. Looks good. Uh, that Mech, Mech game that looks fantastic. Actually, I want to play that. It looks like it's gonna be like Titan. Exo Mecha. Oh, Mecha. Yeah. Is that Exo Yeah, Exo That looks good. Um, what one did I put down? I put a few down. Oh, the the Warhammer one. That's exclusive and all. That looks good. So you've got all these third party games on top of those first party games. You've got so many, and that's you know I, that's my only concern about my PS5. Why I didn't want one um, is the other reason is that I've, we've not seen anything. What what has PS5 got coming to it? They always say Xbox has no games, and I've had this debate with them. So I, and so I list the Xbox games and say, can you now list me the PS5 games? And they don't list me any games. They just list still me games. Looking forward. <laughs> just... I'm still looking forward to the same games from PlayStation 5. Like, I'm still looking forward to um, Stray, because I'm a giant cat lady, guys. Giant oh, okay. cat. I love cats. Oh, so game. I'm, I'm oh, looking that... forward to Stray. Oh, that's an indie. And oh. people think I'm so weird. And um, I am that's looking an indie game. forward to... <laughs> yes, it is an indie game. I am looking like forward... <laughs> that's Game Pass fodder. To what else is that big up there? That Project Athea one? Oh, yeah. See, is it Square Enix doing that? I can't remember. Um, Yeah, those are the two big ones, and there's um that are coming that I would. I'm not too worried about loop, that death loop and then Ghostwire Tokyo because Xbox now owns those the studios, studios and guys. They, and they're, they're most acquiring likely to them in the meantime. Yeah. They'll be coming eventually once the um, yeah, yeah. exclusivity deal um, drops off. out from PlayStation the because that's a cool thing. Xbox is acknowledging that exclusivity deal and continuing yeah. it on. Yeah, exactly. Um, they yeah. could stuff Sony right over and just take away their two of their exclusives. They could screw them over. But yeah. they're not because they're yeah. pro-consumer, so they're not going to do that. Um, there's been no talk of Horizon Zero Dawn, even though it's meant to be releasing this year. 
There's no talk on God of War, which is meant to be releasing this year. <laughs> With no, no but it, there'll be some more stated players coming, let's be yeah, honest. PlayStation but won't say that. Let's also be long. honest, they will not release, release Horizon Zero Dawn 2 and God of War in the same year. Let's be honest. They're not going to release those two games this year. If they do, they both come into PS4. Yeah, and and they'll have nothing next year if they do that. <laughs> will they? What will they have coming next year? Nothing. Punisher? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Punisher, my body. Yeah, can you imagine it? Oh dear. Yeah, off off the back of the success, as I said, off the back back of the success of The Last of Us Two, what success? Bloody hell, we completely bombed. <laughs> it's been on sale since a month after launch. <laughs> it's on sale. Um. Anyway, I think we finished here. We not. We're just sort of just rambling now, aren't we? Should we well, finish the show here? If 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 you if you have um, made it this far into our rambling and it was a lot of rambling uh mainly from elite because i always talk yeah. sense um he's a fraud mm, um, you <laughs> <laughs> um then just pop elites a fraud in the chat <laughs> in the youtube chat pop yeah. that in the chat if you've made it this far <laughs> if, if you think i'm better type in marvel rocks <laughs> <laughs> but um okay we're gonna we're gonna leave you i love you and leave you here Thank you all for watching, and goodbye Thank for now. Guys. Goodbye. <laughs>